Hello, and welcome to the Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Uh, this is the EU-US edition, and it is December 14th. Thank you for joining. Uh, today we have myself, Kevin Martins, Mark Waite, and Bruno Varashtin. And on our agenda, we have the latest LTS was released, uh, the election results blog post, uh, contributor spotlight update, uh, Jenkins Contributor Summit, Google Summer Code 2024 prep, uh, and some uh, or some uh, great progress and work done in the version documentation site. Uh, adding the sponsor attribute page or adding the sponsors page overall. Uh, and then a couple of check-ins on uh, Bruno recently has been working on getting Docker Compose uh, integrated with the Jenkins documentation for tutorials and installations. So we'll take a look at that. Uh, and then something that came up this week, uh, just how update TLI is getting the baseline uh, for its updates. So uh, starting up at the top. So again, uh, LTS 2.426.2 was released just yesterday. Everything went well. Change log and upgrade are live. And thanks to Chris Stern for being the release lead. Uh, the next LTS release is going to have is scheduled for January 24th, 2024. Uh, this coincides with the short break we'll be taking at the end of the month for Jenkins uh, LTS release work. Uh, and during that time, weekly releases still will take place. So uh, you can expect 2.437 and 438 accordingly. Uh, for the election, the 2023 governance board and officer elections. So uh, there was no voting this year. We only had a single candidate for each role. Uh, so the officers that were in the roles are going to continue to stay in their roles for another term. Uh, and the big change for the governance board is we are now welcoming Basil Crow to the governance board. Um, really great to have Basil aboard. Thanks for uh, joining and thanks to everyone for participating, nominating uh, and showing their support. Uh, Alexander Brandis has written a nice blog post explaining a little bit more, providing some background uh, and sharing some insights from Basil himself about what this means and how his involvement with Jenkins. Uh, next up on the agenda, so the contributor spotlight is uh, is live. We've talked previously. Uh, we had Alexander Brandis as the first contributor and we just published Alex Earl's contributor spotlight page yesterday. So uh, he's currently there listed as the featured contributor. Uh, and yeah, everything's going really well. We had a couple of um, things that I missed in the first place, like the plugin macro not being uh, part of the contributor spotlight repo. So something we can talk to Chris or uh, Arve about potentially incorporating, but uh, yeah, everything's going really well. Uh, next up is going to be Chris Stern's spotlight page. Uh, however, mm -hmm since we're taking a little bit of a break and due to the holidays and end of year, there's typically lower traffic, lower visibility. Uh, we want to truly give Chris a chance to have the spotlight shine and have that be with normal traffic, normal visibility, normal user um, flow. So uh, we're going to push back the original date of December 27th and we're going to push and have Chris's page be published on January 10th. So we'll start the new year with Chris. Um, Chris has done a ton for the Jenkins project, Google Summer of Code, uh, the Contributor Spotlight site itself uh, over the past year. So we think it's only fair that Chris gets a, a, a well-deserved time in the, in the sun. Uh, and then something else that we had started talking about uh, previously is the page navigation. Uh, so Chris has created a pull request for uh, to suggest updating the navigation of the Jenkins text logo uh, here because right now it goes to the root of whatever URL you are on. So if I go to Alex's Contributor Spotlight page and click Jenkins, it just takes me back to contributors.jenkins.io. That is intended functionality right now, uh, but there's been a question lately of, is that expected behavior for users if they wanna go from Contributor Spotlight to Jenkins.io directly? Uh, this logo doesn't do that for them. They would have to click somewhere like blog and then there. Um, so saving that that effort, saving those clicks, saving that confusion. Um, yeah, potentially helpful. So uh, this would be a change, however, across all of the sites. So mm -hmm. it would be the contributor spotlight, it would be the plugin site as well, um, where that might be a little counterintuitive. Someone might wanna just be brought back to the plugins index homepage. Um, so there's definitely discussion to be had and the, it's happening in the pull request. Um, I've checked in with Alyssa and others that were tagged in it to see they might be able to take a look and add some comments. So time will tell. 
Um, but yeah, there, there definitely needs to be discussion made because it uh, comes down to user expectations, you know, intended functionality, stuff like that. So, so are we going to uh, vote uh, at the end of the discussion? Because I think I remember Mark was against the change and I was more or less, um, I was agreeing with the change. So I don't want to battle at all, but how will we know which way to go? So uh, I checked in with Alyssa earlier today, uh, since she was one of the people that were was tagged in it and has some, uh, you know, was uh, part of the initial conversation about what is the expected behavior versus what is the actual behavior. Um, so we're I mean, we're looking for the conversation to happen, whether someone agrees with or disagrees with the idea. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, we can have that that we can figure that out at the end of it. If no one says anything, though, that that becomes that much harder. Um, and yeah, and Bruno, yeah. you were absolutely right. A couple of weeks ago, when we did first start talking about this, you were you were supportive of it. Mark felt differently. Uh, I'm somewhere in the middle because I can't make a decision to save my life sometimes. But um, yeah, I, th yeah. I think it's it's not so black and white in this case. No, even I, I I'm not so sure I'm a supporter anymore uh, <laughs> of this change. I may have changed my mind. In fact, the current behavior is somehow awkward in certain situations, but the change would be awkward in other situations to do. So I, I don't know what to choose. In in fact, we'll see. Yeah, and and that's and that's the thing. And like you said, it's a change that happens everywhere. So while it could make sense in one case, it may not make sense in another. Mm -hmm. But is is that extra step of navigating away as like crucial of an issue to to do this change? I guess is um, yeah. How how detrimental to the experience is that at the end of the day? It is yeah, and tough I to even measure, had but... a, a worse idea, which would be when you are somewhere deep into one of these sub sites. When you click on the Jenkins icon, you get back to the root of the sub site. And then if you click again, then you go to Jenkins.io. Forget it. Okay. I uh, I think I see what you're saying, Bruno. Yes. I think mm -hmm. I see I think I think with that, it would be similar to the issue that we're in now though, where yeah. if you click the logo, it brings you and then you have to still click around to get back. So um, yeah. Mark, any thoughts, concerns, questions, curiosities on that one? <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have any, uh, as Bruno noted there, if, if the top left icon always takes you to www.jenkins.io, there will be people who will be confused by that. Um, there, the plugin site doesn't really have a, another clickable link that takes you to the root of the plugin site without having a trip through www.jenkins.io unless that let top left hand corner icon has exactly the behavior it has today right that's that's your return to root of plugins now the return to root on other locations yeah so no, no i've got an opinion and as bruno said correctly whichever path we choose will confuse some Right, we can we can guarantee it will confuse or inconvenience some. Okay, thank you very much, Mark. Appreciate it. So yeah, time will tell. We'll hopefully we'll get some more comments and some discussion happening on the pull request, and we can take things from there. Uh, next up on the agenda, so the Jenkins Contributor Summit at Boston. It's been announced. We've got a nice blog post here from John Mark Miss N. Uh, describing it, adding some important dates, info, times, et cetera, about it. About it. Um, it's going to be occurring on February 2nd, just prior to FOSTEM, which is going to be the third and fourth in Brussels. Uh, and we have the meetup page for the event. So if you plan on attending, feel free to register that here and uh, share that indication with the organi organizers of the event. Uh, Google Summer of Code 2024 prep has begun. We've been discussing this for a few weeks as well. Uh, we just had a call for mentors blog post published uh, from uh, Alyssa Tong and Jean-Marc Massen. So uh, we're now up to 10 mentors that have signed up, which is great. Uh, still could use some more. Uh, the project ideas are growing. The list is 
available and there are still being ideas uh, still ideas being added to it um, so really great to see that much uh, support and interest in these um, there's a couple other ideas that have been getting thrown around in the last couple of days that still need to be added chris stern will be adding a pr for one of those um, and yeah there's constant there's just constant work being done right now there's still a little bit before uh, the organization application can be submitted um, but we're ramping up towards that planning the meetups for the potential mentors in january and discussing things uh, going forward so really great to see the amount of participation we'd love to see more of course but um things are the ball's rolling which is nice uh bruno any other insights on google summer code that we want to share today or does that cover everything that pretty well yes yeah, pretty well Okay, great. Uh, then the next on the agenda is the version documentation site for Jenkins.io. This is something that's been being worked on for, for some time now, part of Google Summer of Code 2023. Uh, Vandit and Chris Stern have been working on this um, and they are really close to release or at least getting it integrated into infrastructure. So uh, they've got the docs.jenkins.io you know, right, almost ready to go. Uh, and then uh, Vandit and Chris are looking for review and feedback on, oops, that's not the, interesting. So that's that link isn't leading to the right site, but I can get that really fast. Uh, da, 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 da. So this is the updated version documentation site that Vandi has been working on with Chris. Um, everything looks great. They're, like I said, they're just looking for feedback, reviews. Um, Tim Jacome was actually uh, taking a look at it earlier and noticed that uh, there were some images that were inline. And so they were extending past the table of contents. Uh, Vandi it's already on top of that. It plans on submitting a PR. Uh, everything looks really great to me. So it's really just a matter of making sure that everything is okay, lines up, and uh, content is accurate at this point on the, the version site. Um, they definitely they still have a couple things to take care of to get that integration started for with the infra team, uh, but they're asking for the feedback and the review so they can do that part. Um, they uh, also have a repo for this um, under Jenkins Docs. So uh, yeah, it, everything's pretty much uh, on the doorstep, waiting to to go to go in, which is really exciting. Uh, and it actually looks like Vandi is joining us now. Mm -hmm. um, Vandi, I'll give you a second to get connected and everything. But um, if you feel comfortable or you want to talk about the version documentation, it'd be really nice to have you share your insights. Hey everyone, uh, uh, sorry I couldn't hear you. I just connected my earphones. Can you repeat it for for me? Yeah, no worries, Wendy. Uh, we were just talking about the version documentation site, um, going over some of the notes from the previous Docs office hours. Uh, and yeah, we just wanted to give you a chance uh, or some time to talk about it, share insights. Um, I know that in the Gitter channel, you'd asked for a review of the site for uh, any inconsistencies or any issues anyone else might find. So yeah, just, yeah, I want to give you time here. Okay, okay, yeah. So uh, uh, currently what I'm working on is I'm clearing up the Andorra build errors that uh, they, these are mostly about uh, the linking. Interpage linking is completely different between Austract and Andorra. So uh, that that I have done and are, I think around 80, 80 links to each pages, uh, like Interpages is left. Uh, after that, some something I need to share is uh, for the GSOC page, GSOC pages on the Jenkins docs, uh, the version Jenkins docs, uh, the uh, table of content that is on the left side, the left side one table of content. Uh, I I I I still have to like put it in a nice way since current current currently it has uh project ideas for each page in a drop down and it it is making it really uh, really long to scroll. If you go there, you can see it. So uh, I think I would need some help to what to show on the front. Uh, if yeah, if we if we go to on the projects. Uh, yep. Uh, projects. Oh. 
no no left bottom left bottom jenkins user documentation oh uh, sorry yeah uh i it i guess it will be in the projects yep see uh currently under the gsoc section it it has Gen google summer of code if you drop it down if you drop this one down to on the left side similarly each a each this is this this makes it really huge and if if we or if we or drop drop down other link other uh drop drop downs too so i i think this will this will need some help to what to show on the front do we intend only to show about current gsoc uh, gsoc of current year and the previous one or all of them stacked stacked or and the like we don't we don't show the project ideas because the links to the project idea will be on the main uh, gsoc page of that year So, so Vandi, my wrestle there is I would consider the GSOC materials not to be a version documentation topic at all, right? Yes, so yeah, it's uh, not. It's not. Okay. All right. Yep. And the uh, since you can see the default one, default or the latest tag, uh, we we have to we have to make it uniform. Current, uh, uh I think only two uh, two of them are default. Uh, what uh, Chris and me agreed on way back, I, I don't, uh, way back was uh, we will name them, uh, give it a label tag of latest. So, ah. yeah. So, uh, we, we we need to rename it to uh, latest. I will write it somewhere so I can do it. Uh, and currently, if you go to the download page, it is, uh, the if you go, if you scroll there, uh, yeah, yeah download and deployment mm -hmm. uh it's not going taking you anywhere i have fixed it i have linked it to the current jenkins .io do, uh, download page for now because uh, this page is built with gatsby so it will be hosted uh, separate uh, separately so i'm not sure i understand what you do. so what i see is a page that doesn't render correctly your intent is to replace the current downloads page with one that's rendered with Gatsby instead of the way it's currently rendered with Ostruct yeah. and Ruby. Uh, what I meant was, uh, if when we click on it, uh, we should uh, we will we uh, don't go to the download page. Down the if you search on Jenkins.io download page, uh, the, you are this is not uh, it because right. that is rendered with Gatsby. So because we don't have the Gatsby site up. We can't link them. So that that part. So Kevin, if you'll click in the top right hand corner, download. I expect that link to take me straight to the actual download page. And uh, it, I don't think so. That uh, I don't think so. That works like that because the uh, banner, the top banner, is uh, exported from Jenkins IO component components, and it just appends. The current ah, okay. URL. So it's just going yeah. to slash download. Okay. Yeah. So, but on the main Jenkins.io page, the, you should see this. This I have already built with Gatsby. When it will be up, we can link the da Jenkins download deployment uh, uh, button to that one. That one. Okay. So, Vandi, I just to be sure I'm understanding. So, what you're saying is that the on the on the current github.io site on the prototype site what we see when you click the download link is is it takes me to a a download location that is slash download but then slash latest slash index.html kevin if you just rewrite that url as slash download i assume it's still the same page Okay, yep. and and Vandit, what you're saying is this will eventually be a Gatsby generated page. Yep. Okay. So and basically, when it since is uh, or... yeah, hey, Kevin, go on. Go oh no, I was gonna say go ahead, Vandit. Since uh, the Gatsby site is not up, we can't link it to that one. So I have linked it to the current Jenkins.io. I asked it on the Gitter channel uh, to Chris and he suggested me to do that. And I was also thinking the same. 
and uh, I, I I think that's all for now that I can remember. Most of the build, most of the things are working properly. The the one issue I the one issue I can think of right now is some links uh some links are not getting in the error log. Some links that, uh, may not some links uh not most of them but some links on the page are not working properly and they are not also getting in the error log. So I think we can add it in the banner that if you can if you find a link. You can create a issue or something like that. I think they'll they'll be really low since uh, I have checked and the error logs came out. So most of them are working and some links that are orange on the uh, Jenkins doc site are also not working. So I'm also fixing them right now. If we go to project uh, on the yeah, yeah, that one, that one. Yeah, exactly that one like that. So these pages do exist, but they are just not working. So just I need to fix how they are linked. Currently, if you tap, if you click on them, only the URL is getting appended with that. If you say on the top. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's adding this, uh, yeah. The, yeah, so everything after the hash mark, basically. Yeah, so the it is the location. It is the it is actually the location after the hash. So uh, I will just check why it's not working on some pages because uh, I have uniformized all the links. So there might be some other issue. I I'll check it when all the error logs will be cleaned up. So yeah, that's all from my side for right now. And uh, and then do you, just to clarify, you said um you've got this site already essentially built in Gatsby for when you go to link it in the version site. You said right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So this the is so that what... is, the code for that is available on Jenkins Docs GitHub uh, repo, uh on on the on the same repo. Great. Thank you very much. Uh yeah, you were saying something. Sorry to interrupt you. No, no, um, no, uh, no, no, don't worry about that. Uh, I was, yeah, I was just asking, I was just clarifying for myself, if anything. Um, yeah, so no worries. All good. Thank you. Awesome. Great. So, um, yeah, is, 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 there, is there anything else to be aware of or anything that we should keep in mind when looking for anything or when reviewing the site, Fondi? Um, everything's been covered. I, I think there, at this point, there, there's one. There's one thing I was thinking. Uh, like I was thinking of proposing to Chris that uh, who, Chris helped. Chris helped me with the local installation. Uh, uh, local local uh playbook file. Uh, so basically, Entora uses a playbook file to generate the static file. So I was thinking of proposing that we create. We create. We create a make file target of make make local and make prod so you don't have to you don't have to change locations uh that will be much easier for the uh, mm -hmm. local setup when someone else will be doing it on their local machine that is something i am thinking of proposing it to chris i still have to uh form form a complete structure if i'm proposing something what will be the benefits and some disadvantages if there will be any. Great. Thank you so much. Really appreciate all the work, Randy. Um, yeah, we're really excited just also just see the progress of this so far. It's uh, going from Google Summer Code to now. It's really exciting. So, so thank you. Bandit. Bandit, I had the action item with Chris. He and I discussed yesterday in, a, in another meeting. I forget what the meeting was, that you're at a at a point where you're hoping very soon to make it to be be very near complete or at least near near to a point where we'd be ready to deploy to docs.jenkins.io. So over the next two days, it's a really good time for us to evaluate and look for any other problems on your prototype site. Is that still correct? Yep. Okay, so these next two days are very, very valuable for us to to give you feedback on the prototype site. 
yeah uh it's the weekend so i'll be hy hyperactive on the getter just ping me anything i'll uh if i can fix it in next five minutes or ten minutes i'll do it great thanks Uh, so next up on the agenda, uh, we have the adding the sponsors uh, either as a to the downloads page or uh, what we've been discussing and what Basil's created is having a separate sponsors page. Um, we've been suggest we've been discussing things like what levels to use, what kind of uh, denomination that means for the sponsors, and how we can properly uh, take care of all this and list everything. Um, so right now the PR is there. Is uh, Basel's got a mock-up of the page, uh, which looks really good. Mark suggested using the Olympic medals for levels, as well as the aforementioned anchor and mirror uh, levels. So, uh, yeah, if anyone has any strong opinions otherwise, I think that works really well, and I think it makes sense for the financial component and for uh, the non-financial aspect that some of these sponsorships include. So. That I think that's a really great idea and also provides the recognition to the sponsors that we want to make sure is pre present on the site. Uh, Mark, any any other notes on the sponsorship stuff or just speaking? Uh, Basel, Basel reported that he has the he now has access to some of the data that he needed in order to to do a little bit more refinement on the on the prototype. And and he's going to go ahead and do some further refinement. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Uh, and so now we are at time. Uh, Bruno, we had put the doc compose and uh, update CLI baseline pull requests on here. Um, uh, do you want to talk uh, about them? Uh, if we are short of time, we could talk about that next week. That's OK. As you please. OK. Um, and for warning, next week I won't be attending. Yeah, no worries. So, uh, oh, speaking of which, does that mean next week's Asia Docs office hours is then will be more? will be canceled? Yeah, I'm. Okay. It's my fortieth wedding anniversary. My wife is going to get my full attention. Rightfully so. Good call. Um, yeah, and uh, I'll, I'll still be here. So we'll have regular uh, EU US docs office hours. Um, and then we'll talk about housekeeping the next for the next week, next week. Yeah. Um, yeah, that wraps everything up for us here. Uh, anyone else have anything they want to share before we wrap up? No. Nope. Cool. All right. Uh, so the video will be available in 24 to 48 hours. Uh, stay safe. Take care. Uh, if we don't see you next week, happy holidays and enjoy the uh, the end of the year. Bye. Bye-bye.